Uh, we are doing a, an interview today, and uh, Lana Wright is here with me, and so she's going to be talking to us about the uh, Wayne County Family Connection. And I learned today that there's no S on it. I, I have all this time have been wanting to put an S and making it connections, but it's not. And she's going to tell us a little bit about what all that she does and what the Family Connection, uh, what they do and what they help for in here in Wayne County. And so it's going to be, I'll be asking questions and she'll be talking and I'm going to make her talk a lot because I think she's got a lot to say. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to this. And of course, this is pre-recorded, so... Uh, you can't call in and ask any questions, people. So, Lana, please tell me, uh, you came, did you always live here in Wayne County? I did. Uh, my father moved here not long after the mill was built. Okay. okay. So, my family, uh, my mother, father, and my brother, and I lived here, all, all, well, we moved here from South Carolina, was the last place my father worked. And we moved here, we've been here ever since. I went to Miss Madge Sewell's kindergarten. I remember, yes, on Cherry yes. Street yes. behind their house. Absolutely. Um, and so from then we went, um, I remained here. I graduated from high school here. Um, and then I got this announcement to come for an interview at Fort Stewart, Georgia. And I was a little apprehensive that my father, being the person that always told me life is hard but it's fair, mm -hmm. uh, said, you need to go explore this opportunity. So I did, and I was uh, able to, to get the job. And you know, as a young person, you sit there saying, I'm never going to retire, I'm never going to retire. So after 10 years, I was still there. And then after 20, I was still there. And after 39 years, I retired. My goodness. So uh, my background there was in law enforcement. I started off in the MP business. Um, and then I moved over to the strategic planning analysis and integration office. And what we did there was strategic planning for Fort Stewart and Hiram Airfield. And um, was able to get some education there. Uh, opportunity to uh, become a Baldrige examiner. Okay. And a lean, a black belt, lean Six Sigma black belt and um, did a lot of strategic planning, goal setting, looking at objectives, measures, process improvement, those kind of things. Uh -huh. That was right up my alley. I am not a creative person. <laughs> I would not attempt to draw a picture, but I can look at a good spreadsheet. Uh -huh. so that, makes, that makes you understand how I am. Uh -huh. um, I'm, a lot, I'm real process oriented, um, and so, uh, the opportunity for me to, well, I retired and came home and I realized the house was clean by 9.30 in the uh -huh. morning. My husband's still at work. My children were grown and gone. And I'm sitting here, what can I do today? Uh -huh. So having worked at Fort Stewart, Georgia, all of my life, um, I was not really able to get involved in the community a lot because the hours that I worked were long. Mm -hmm. And um, so an opportunity came up. My husband called me and said, hey, there's a job opening in the paper. You might want to look at it in Boston strategic planning and it looks like good community work. And of course it was a uh, family connection. So Lisa Brewer at the time was mm -hmm. the director and I put an application in, went for an interview and oh golly. And within 30 minutes they called me and said I was hired. <laughs> My, that's and probably got to be the fastest process I ever for, for a and job. And I was so thankful. Now, I, now one thing about family connection different to my previous career, mm -hmm. was that the Army has regulation or a policy for everything they do. Um, and when I assumed the role as Director of Family Connection, you know, there's not books around that you can pull down and read, okay, here's what we have to do and here's what I gotta get it done by. Exactly. It was kind of like a Columbus thing, you know, you explore and land on it. Uh -huh. But I had some phenomenal people, Lisa for one, yes. uh -huh. and some people in the community that was already familiar with Family Connection, uh, board members that had been there for a long time and mentored me greatly. Margaret Jacobs was one oh, of them. Yes. And so I was able to get my feet on the ground and begin to do the work. Um, the first couple of years it was a little challenging because I wasn't accustomed to the way things are done there. Right. But, <clears throat> and not challenging for anybody but me, just learning the new process. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, um, our board began to grow, our collaborative began to grow, the things in the community that we saw that needed to be fixed were beginning to 
be revealed mm -hmm. and we were able to sit down and have good collaborative conversation about where we need to go to from here. Right. So I'm now here. when when you get together and you say um, you saw the needs in the community and they became uh, they began to be revealed, what types of things are we talking about? Well <clears throat> There were several things. One is the educational need to get our children reading mm -hmm. on the level that they should be reading. <clears throat> and I'm a believer that teachers can't do it all. No, they Most, can't. Some parents mm -hmm. think they can, but it starts at home. Um, the second thing is, is that we recognize that we had low birth weight uh, babies in our community. And, you know, that is a direct correlation of nutrition, right. uh, in some cases substance abuse, Yes. Um, in some cases it's just not being able to afford the things that you need to, you know, go through a pregnancy and have a healthy, you know, full, full weight baby. Right. Um, educating our children on the dangers of um, STDs, mm -hmm. you know, and that was growing in our community and still is. Yes, it is. Um, more and so than, than a lot of people want to. Absolutely. Oh, no, that doesn't happen right. know, with our teenagers. That's correct. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then we saw uh, in the very, very near, uh, while we were pro doing our processes, we saw the tremendous growth in the need for community awareness, awareness and mental health. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we like to say mental health kind of controls everything, every bit of our being. I mean, that controls my little community. Theory, and I'm no mental health provider, but it controls what we eat, it controls what we drink, it controls mm -hmm. what we do to our bodies, mm -hmm. it, you know, it controls what we think. So um, we we know, we recognized immediately that our community wasn't really informed very well on the things to look for. Uh -huh. We had some issues on how to handle people that may be suffering from a mental abuse. A mental health issue uh -huh. and so we put together in our collaborative a mental health task force wonderful and and that starts uh, we have a chairperson that kind of runs that task force uh -huh. her name is Shauna Mattingly she yes I know Shauna uh -huh. and she is phenomenal when yes, it comes she to is. helping us with that that process and the other thing we recognized that um, most people may not see visually in the community as you ride through, as you would in a larger city like Washington, D.C., or, you know, Chicago, or bigger cities, a homelessness yes, issue. Yes, yes. Um, and so, you know, um, I, working for the Army, I had to go to the Washington quite often to do work. And, you know, you walk out, and it's not unusual to see people that are homeless you know, in the streets. Mm -hmm. We normally don't see that in a small city like mm -hmm. Jessup or Wayne County, but they're, they are there. Oh, they're there. And so uh, another thing the collaborative is concerned about is how can we, we don't really have a lot of programs to meet those needs right now. And what we're working real hard to do is generate some type of partnership mm -hmm. or be included in a coalition, maybe in another county, that can help support Wayne County when we get those situations. In right. Our right. So we're working that as part of our strategy. So I know I've kind of said a lot, but no, but, um, it, but that's what you right. know because uh, it's one thing to go and, and sit at a meeting and say, "Okay, people, we're going to do this and this and this," and then nothing gets done. Right. It's another thing to see what needs to be done and get and get out there and make sure that you get. The board members Absolutely. and the coalitions and all of this on board where they can really get out there and make a difference and we first of all uh, family connection was designed by governor zell miller in 1991 okay. it was a program that he envisioned and it took off we are the only program in the country that has a that has family connection with a coordinator one of me uh -huh. in 159 counties. Really, the state of Georgia. You will you will find a family connection person in all counties inside the state of Georgia. Um, my county is Region Nine, or my area is right. covered in Region Nine. Each of the regions have a customer support specialist, okay. and um, she is directly employed by the state of Georgia through the partnership. Okay, and she, each region has one. 
and uh, ours is Sunny Rogers. She okay. lives outside of McRae. She has a big job because there's a lot of us in Region 9. Oh. And so she comes uh, periodically to our collaboratives and she is there if we need any support. Other than that, the partnership is very good about letting the local collaborative work their processes. Uh -huh. um, they give us some guidance, they give us some things that we need to be looking for, but they let us run our collaborative and they let us deal with, they let us pay attention to the community needs. Well that, because every community is different. It's different, that's correct. Well like you were talking about the low birth rate uh, where Wayne County was having it, you know, years right. ago. Uh, well, maybe in another county they don't that's have that correct. problem. That's so I, that's a wonderful thing. So basically, um, the partnership was formed at the, at, uh, at, in the state of Georgia in the Atlanta area, and um, it was it was designed for every county. And the basis of that was basically to establish a capability to connect with partners within the county. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about all kinds of partners. We're talking about health, medical folks, we're talking about lawyers, we're talking about business owners, we're talking about you know affiliations, the Board of Education, the hospital, uh, anybody. We, we welcome anyone on our collaborative. I uh -huh. mean, we're, uh, we put articles in the newspaper every week inviting people to come join us. We are in dire need of more family member representation. You don't have to be a business owner or, you know, a, a professional person inside the community or whatever. It, we 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 love to have family members because sometimes you get your best information from oh. just a family member in the community. Now, see, I, I I think a lot of times people have the misconception that because I don't own a business, yeah, I'm, I'm not involved in, in this, that, or the other, that I can't be involved right. in that. So that's good to know that the community, if they are just mom and daddy. That's exactly right. You know, we, that they would be welcome we to do that. We cover those folks on our uh -huh. because we definitely need to hear what they think. Yes. About what, you know, you can get to going down one road and all of a sudden you realize, hey, maybe this is not where we need to go. Uh -huh. And you need to have someone kind of give you a check yes. to make sure that, hey, there is a problem here. There may be something out there they recognize that we don't see as a collaborative, you know, as the collaborative right. as, as it currently is. So, you know, we, we, we would love to have family oh, members. Wonderful. So if you know anybody, please let us know. Okay. Call, call them up. Um, the Family Connection vision right now in the state of Georgia is where all of our children are healthy, primed for school, and succeed when they get there, and that we build a strong family, families within our community, so that we can have a vibrant, robust community, and that they can thrive. Uh -huh. um, so that's our, that's our vision, that's yeah. our partnership vision. We adopt that vision at the local level because we all want to stay focused on the same thing, basically. Um, our, you know, and our purpose is what I have generally stated. Our purpose is to look at what's going on in the community, look and see if there's any areas that really need improvement or that we can do uh -huh. as a collaborative. Uh, where we operate off the state grant, so we don't have money to put forth to make something happen, but mm -hmm. we can certainly pull resources right. and right. work with people to get mm -hmm. things done. When I came on with Family Connection, two of the major processes that I was told that Family Connection played a role in was our community transit program. Yes. And uh, the Boys and Girls Club. Okay. So those were two things that I, you know, we hear about all over the country. I mean, there's a lot of Boys and Girls Clubs in other oh, counties. Yes. And there's a lot of transit systems in other counties. So, you know, that gave me a really good feeling that, hey, there is something we can do that benefits the entire community. Just yes. a certain segment. Yes. So, um, other than that, we uh, we do pay attention to a lot of statistics, and if we have a few minutes, what I'd like to do at this point yeah. is kind of go through. So we have a governing body, uh -huh. and the governing body chooses our chair, okay. and from that we have an executive board, and we have a collaborative board. The executive board is made up of four members right now. They have served with me for a good long while, mm -hmm. which I'm very thankful for. Our chairperson uh, presently is Ted Buford, and Ted used to be the, deep, the Department of Labor guy here. Okay, he that's why retired. that name sounds familiar. Okay, okay. Our co-chair is uh, Susan Delegal. 
Uh huh. And she's web electronics and digital marketing. Yes. I don't know if I got that right. I hope she forgives me. <laughs> title. But anyway, but she is just phenomenal with us. And then we have John Benner, uh -huh. um, who's the Wayne Service, Service Center. Yes. And he is our uh, financial officer. And then this year, each year, the Board of Education needs to give me a agent to represent the, our physical agent. Um, the Board of Education here in Jessup, or in, for Wayne County, is uh -huh. my physical agent for, uh -huh. the, for the resources that I get from the state. And so there is a representative on our executive board that kind of oversees to make sure everything is, is okay. Yes. And this year, it's uh, I got a new one. Um, Dr. Brinson uh, always gives me a principal to sit on my board. And usually for two years. Uh -huh. And this year it is Jeremy Foreman. Oh, the new, the and new principal at Arthur Williams. Right. And yes. I, I haven't met him personally, but we've been corresponding on uh -huh. email. And matter of fact, our first meeting was conducted on the opening day of school. Oh no! And so he, <laughs> he sent me an apology, but I said, you know, that's we certainly understand. As long as you're taking care of our children, we're that's right. We're, we're that's fine right. With that. But anyway, I'm looking forward to meeting him yes, in person. I've heard yes. a lot of good things about him. So, um, and then of course we have several board members under collaborative board, board members under the executive board. And our structure is is that we are um, they what the board does is the the board works with as a overseer of the collaborative. And what our collaborative responsibilities are is to number one develop an annual plan every year. Um, we have to develop that. It has to be approved by our partnership. We have to look at. We have to do a financial plan. Even though we're pretty much told how much money we get every year, we have to build a financial plan, um, and we also have to tell them the strategies that we want to pay attention to in, in, in Wayne County. And like I said, we kind of mandate the educational strategy because that comes from Atlanta, uh -huh. and we need to do that in right, Atlanta. Right. Right. Um, and so uh, right now we have two main strategies. We have the educational one for our third and fifth graders, uh, one for reading, one for math, and we have our, um, what we call stable family. Um, and that involves the mental health awareness okay, for our okay. community. It also involves um, the homeless uh, coalition. We want to build a homeless par partnership and hopefully a coalition. Uh -huh. um, so what we're doing now is trying to go forth and try to make those happen. Um, now you mentioned Shauna, and she works at Anchored and Wellness. Right, mm -hmm. and uh, I know Shauna. Her her uh, heart has been with the homeless for yes. several yes, years yes, now. Yes. In fact, she and I work together uh, in a group, and we met briefly, uh, and then I think whoever was doing it, right. it kind of fell through. Right. But Shauna had shared so many things. She's, yeah. she's got a, she's all, she has an awesome personality. She, she has a love for the pe for people mm -hmm. and a willingness to work. Yes. So she, we really have her, uh, we really have a benefit with her on both sides. One, through our mental health, because she is a mental health provider. Yes. And number two, because of her knowledge and her desire to help homeless we have mm -hmm. you know so we've gotten two pluses there with her so I'm really really excited with her yes um, and of course all the other collaborative members they're just so absolutely willing to serve and that, that's what makes a good collaborative. yes oh yes um, that the Pineland our college here uh, not Pineland Coastal Pines. Coastal Pines. Yes. I, Pine I know. The Coastal Pines College uh -huh. here. I have some uh, allergies. The Coastal, oh, that's all right. the Coastal Pines College here is well represented on my collaborative. Oh, good. We track, we, you know, we, we are involved in how the GED testing and process goes. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, high school students that are able to go take college courses oh, to get ready yes. to go to school. Uh -huh. um, uh, we're able to stay in tune with those. They give us indicators all the time of how well our students are doing, how many are enrolled. That's a, I really wish that program was around when I came along because that, that's a blessing to parents yes. and the children. Yes. You know, so, uh, but anyway, um, with our collaborative and with our strategic plan, what I want to share a little bit with you is just some data that we track monthly and we base our, or actually quarterly, uh -huh. And we base a lot of our decisions and how we do our planning 
on the information that comes to us. Now, uh, we get our data, our statistical data, from a place called Kids Count. Okay, I saw that okay, on and, your website. Right, yes. yes. That's the Annie, Annie E. Casey Foundation. Okay. And um, she is a real person, or and she was instrumental in putting together things that affect, well, numerous things about family and children and health and all kinds of things. Okay. Communities, you know, where they are, the poverty level. But she gets data from everywhere in the system, and they put it together, and we're able, and they give the partnership access. Wow. Um, to okay. the kids count data. And most yeah. people can go out there and query the, uh, on Google and query kids count, uh -huh. and they can even go in and look at data themselves. Oh, okay. It's not a, like a, pa some areas of it, it's not like a password control uh -huh. thing. So I encourage the public to go look at that if they get time, because, you know, it's beneficial if you want to write a grant. Oh, area, gotcha. Because okay. there's so much data out there to be able yeah. to use. So that's one area. Um, we, I mentioned to you before we started videoing that we got our information down where the state of Georgia sits right now. Um, Georgia, again, I emphasize the word again, ranks 38th in the nation for overall child and family well being in our latest kids' count information. Okay, okay. good. That's where, that's how that. Uh, number is, uh, is driven from. Uh -huh. Okay, and so I said that to say that when, how that corresponds with what we look at is, we'll, we'll start off with the educational piece. Uh -huh. um, Georgia's ranked 37th in education. And you think, oh goodness. But I will say that there is some good news locally in that area, but overall we still got some work to do. Yes. Um, the percentage for high school students that graduate on time, uh, right now, uh, it fell from 19% in 2017 to 18% in 2018. Okay. Now, the good news there is, though, is that with Wayne County, we, our, our rates uh, in 2018 were 91%. And in 2018, it, was, it climbed to 94%. Wow. So, you know, while we look at saying, oh, goodness, we don't have a lot of kids, our kids are not graduating on time, Wayne County, I feel, overall is doing a really good job yes. of getting our kids, keeping our kids in school. And the Board of Education has done a tremendous job with the programs so that we can afford these kids the opportunity to graduate. Yes. So I'm, I'm definitely. Absolutely. So, um, now, a couple of other things that are interesting is that I talked to you about education being one of the things that we look at and the third and fifth grade reading and, or English and language arts <laughs> and mathematics. <laughs> so I want to share with you just a little bit here. Um, we began this in 2015, tracking the data. In the beginning, our point for our third grade readers was 31.7%. And this was in the proficient learner category. Um, our most recent county data has come up now to 44.6%. Um, and this is 2019. Wow. The state of Georgia is at 42%. Oh, so we have surpassed the state of Georgia's oh, record. And we're in, and I want to say, we're in the green. Yes, yes. So that, yes. that's been a good, a tremendous accomplishment speaks volumes for teachers uh -huh. and also other programs that we can try to support outside of actually the school some yeah. reading programs the library oh, yes. you know those things that mm -hmm. can help uh, offset uh, children's learning capabilities when they're not actually in the classroom gotcha uh, our math levels we began with a 36.9 at the beginning of the day which was 2015 again, and we're our most recent data is at 42.8 percent. Um, the state of Georgia is at 40.8 percent. Ah. So there again, we have made some, I think, marked strides. In yes. Those areas. Yes. Um, so those are some of the things that we track and we talk in the collaborative about it. We get information from our educators. That's why it's so beneficial for us to have. A, a principal yes. on our board, yes. on our executive board, because they give us tremendous feedback. Mm -hmm. If something's going on in school, 
an example is one year I had a principal, and I won't name any names, right. but they talked about some of the children coming in that really didn't have the hygiene that they really needed to have, you know, uh, and children are going to be children, particularly in our elementary grades, but sometimes children can't afford things. Exactly. So what we did is we partnered with another agency in town, and they began to give us their overflow of hygiene items. Shampoo, deodorant, um, you know, uh, body bath, soap. Uh -huh. And so, what we would do is we would create little packets and take oh. them, get them to the school. So they were able, and we did that with the local church that was already doing the backpack, the yes, buddy backpacks. Yes, the buddy backpacks. And uh -huh. so, it worked out where we could get children those kinds of things that we thought they needed or that would help them mm -hmm. in that area um, without you know, being so visual. Yes, yes. Without it being so visible to other students. Yes. So I was really thankful for that. So those, those are the things that we get to help out with. Yes. Um, I had an elementary school one time. I was, I, my office is in the Pineview housing area. Okay. Uh -huh. um, Mark Watson has uh, been most uh, helpful to me. I was located in the old band room at the high school. Oh my that, goodness. Till that must monsoon hit us that uh -huh. evening and flooded everything in Wayne County a couple of years ago. And so when I went in and turned on the light, I was ankle deep in water. So obviously we had to make some changes. Yes. And for a while I had no meeting place for the collaborative. And then uh, Mark Watson got in touch with me and said, hey, I've got an office down in Pineview that we don't use anymore because we've moved to the new area and I welcome you to use it. So. Right. That was a now, blessing. That's that, a blessing. Is it's that the one right down? Right off Street, yes. off the bamboo. Right, right, and right. And so inside of, the, of that area, I noticed we have a lot of children there. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, what a better way to get some reading material. So we did a little lending library. Um, I think we took one of the old press sentinel boxes that <laughs> wasn't working anymore. And we... Uh, <gasps> You know what? And we spray painted it all up uh -huh. and we put it out there and one of the elementary schools in the county uh -huh. um, afforded me the opportunity to get some of the discarded oh, library good, books for that good, age. Good. So I was able, I'm able to, I'm always out beating the bush for books. So if you know anybody that's got any books, yeah, let me know and I'll come pick them up. Okay. But I just put them in the little box on mm -hmm. the front porch of our building. And kids come and take them for oh, free. And good. I usually have to fill them up about once every two weeks. Good. So good. I feel good about that because I think they're getting, you know, some little books to read, which which helps them. Well, um, I was going to say that the uh, way, the uh, Altamaha Woman's Club, mm -hmm. we uh, we donated one to uh, to the housing authority. That was an old press set. Well, that, that, that may be how, what I got. But, yeah. But I got one, and so we just started putting books in good, good. for that area. Uh -huh. and, uh, and it helps. I think it helps tremendously. Yeah. Um, so we had, we've opened up our office, at, um, not this past summer, of course, because mm -hmm. we were under the COVID pandemic oh, restrictions. Okay. But last summer, we were able to open up the office twice a week for an hour um, you know, reading session with the oh, children. Oh, good. And that worked out good because our um, breakfast and summer feeding program, they deliver breakfast and lunches to those areas. So we happened to be on that delivery area, so the kids that were reading there got their lunch there. Oh, So that yeah. worked out really good. Um, we, but some of those programs we kind of fell, not, I don't want to say they fell by the wayside, but they were had to be put on hold. Yes. Well, everything of, you know, has. We had to go through the pandemic. Yes, so, everything yeah. has. So we, um, but we're going to try to get back in full swing if the Lord's willing come mm -hmm. this coming summer with, with those kinds of programs. Good. Right now, our meetings are conducted every, the fourth Monday in every month, unless we have, it's surrounding a holiday, and then as we have a board, or as we have a meeting, um, you know, the board will determine, hey, we can't we can't have it on this day, can we move it? And then mm -hmm. I'll send out the notifications right. to the collaborative. Now, uh, what time do you have We meet at 9.30 okay. on Monday mornings. Uh -huh. um, and it's really from 9.30 to 11. Most of the time we're finished within an hour, hour, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, we try to start on time, and we try to finish on time. Yeah. Um, and so the collaborative will, we, we will talk about, 
uh, the, the people that come in give us updates. Mm -hmm. All the collaborative members will give us an update on what they're doing, what they're doing. If they've got something that they're going to have in the community, uh, you know, if they've got a new program they're putting in place. So we get a lot of uh, networking going good, on there. Good, good. And then um, after that, we talk about um, the business part of it, uh, financial part of it. We take minutes for every meeting. Um, and we are going to be posting those on our website so people can go out there and read what happens in the meetings. Um, and so from then, from, from that point, we just make a lot of phone calls and do a lot of networking. Good. And that's what I do. Um, what I'd like to, I've kind of elaborated a lot on the educational part of what we try to look at. Um, what I would like to share a little bit with you is how our mental health piece is going right now. Okay. Um, our task force was able to get some in-kind money um, that was donated. Well, Mental Health America gave us some, but we redistributed that to other people that could help with mental health and use that for the purpose of mental health mm -hmm. only. Um, and we're still using that. Yeah. Rainier, uh, back during the pandemic, uh, notified one of our board members and said, hey, we have some funding and we would like to do something to try to help with the COVID piece. Uh -huh. So we knew that there's a lot of stress with the, with the pandemic and being in the shelter in place. Right. And we knew that mental health issues were increasing. So we were able to obtain a grant, and I call it a grant, right. from Rainier. And uh, Mr. Clay Bethea came and presented it to us. And what we did with that money, or what we are doing with that money, is we are receiving, or we have put out to the community that we are able to help people that have no insurance, mm -hmm. that are not in a crisis, and they don't already have a provider. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't want to interfere with treatment of other providers. Right. When you fit that category, if you feel like that you need some help, we can get you some help. Yes. And, and it'd be paid for. Uh -huh. And Shauna is heading that up. Oh, good. Uh, well, I say she's heading that up. What she, her, what she does is she's taken another responsibility on uh, being able to touch base with those folks uh -huh. and see what their needs are and try to give them some help. And uh, so it's working very well. Oh, I've received good. several phone calls during the week. Hey, you know, I noticed your article in the paper, which we'll get to in just a minute. Yeah. I'm excited about <laughs> that too. Uh, but anyway, um, so that's working real well. And we hope that as this begins to grow, it's, and it's just not for a shot for, it's just not for a specific anchor and wellness. We, right. Shauna looks at this as a whole mental health provider opportunity. So mm -hmm. irregardless of what mental health agency you fall under, if they receive somebody that's in that category, we can help them. Right. You know? So, and we are going, we can extend that to maybe a school child that might need some help that mm -hmm. fits in that category, you know. So we're willing to do that. We just need people to let us know when they need help and we're going to do our best to do that. Right. The other thing that the task force did was we looked at ways that we could educate the community. So we kind of, we partnered with Miss Joanne Roach at the, at the school, uh -huh. and she is a counselor, and she uh, has been very active on what they call the Stop It app and the Be The One To app. Okay. Now the Stop It app is, is an app that you purchase. The Be The One To app is a little bit more easily, uh, more it's easier to yeah, use. Yeah, because I was thinking uh, when I, I'm, I'm on the Facebook page. That's correct. But I was, I, it seems like, is this on your website? It is. What's happening right. is, is that the Be The One Two has five areas. Um, Be The One Two is, is designed to educate the community in awareness. Mm -hmm. And it has five steps. Um, and the steps, I, we'll talk about in a minute, but what the steps are designed to do is allow people to read the requirement of each step and give them an idea of how if you come in contact with you think that, with someone that you think may have a mental illness problem, mm -hmm. you know, that are not in a crisis because mm -hmm. we have to treat them differently. Oh, yes. I mean, they need help right away. Right. But if you happen to summarize by being around a loved one, mm -hmm. a parent, a child, or any a close friend or an acquaintance that you think may 
need some help, it, it, it goes through the five steps of letting, helping you understand how to help them. Gotcha. What kind of questions to ask, uh -huh. you know. Um, and so we are publishing that in the newspaper. Oh, good. Every week you're going to see a new article. Uh -huh. The first step is to ask. It's okay to just ask somebody, do you need some help? Right. Okay. And then, you know, we the steps to be there, um, to help get them help. You know, the final step is don't forget them. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, we're going to encourage we encourage people to take a look at that article in the paper. They can see it on the website. It's posted out there, and it's also posted on our Facebook, Facebook page. page. So I that, was trying to do some research, so that's why I keep <laughs> referring to the website and the Facebook page. Yeah. <laughs> and so anyway, so we encourage people to get to to, to understand that. And back to Joanne Rhodes, she introduced us to this. Be the one too. Oh, okay. And so, because they're used, they used it in school. So, uh -huh. you know, sometimes school kids don't come home and articulate things to mom and dad. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, or sometimes they're just too busy. Exactly. So, um, she introduces us. We start looking, started looking at it, and it was really a good way to increase our gun health awareness. Ah, so okay. We're doing that. Um, and so, as far as that goes right now, those are the two big things we've got going on under the improve our our awareness. I want to touch just a minute on the homeless thing. We, uh, our homeless endeavor, we um, work with people, you know, we get phone calls a lot. Yeah. And we're kind of operating, or Family Connection is, I don't, there may be other people, I'm sure, in the community that are doing, doing it on a different basis, but we get a notification, we start calling our collaborative members and say, hey, we got a person that needs a home. You know, let's try to get them some help. And mm -hmm. We start calling all around. What what Lana Wright's desire would be is to have a standard process that everybody in the community is aware of, and we pool our resources. Mm -hmm. And so, if we get that call at two o'clock at night or one or eight o'clock in the morning, we can start that call log and have that person taken care of right. within a reasonable amount of time. Um, we started with uh, Liberty County Homeless Coalition. Okay. Mr. Jim McIntosh heads that. And he was invited to our collaborative and gave us an in-depth uh, discussion about what they were trying to do. That collaborative or that coalition was rebranded and now they are into what they call the Georgia Homeless Coalition. Okay. Which helps Wayne County because Jim comes to our meetings and what they're trying to do now is is <clears throat> obtain enough data that they can get some grants that will serve multiple counties in our area and Wayne County would be included. Okay. Um, there's got to be some work done. We need to do a point in time count where mm -hmm. we actually go out to the area and see if we can make contact with people and, you know, count numbers. Mm -hmm. um, we've got to do that first. We had that plan for the month of the first time I think it was the month of June or July and we had to postpone it because of COVID. Uh -huh. Then we, we targeted August but now that's out. So yes. <laughs> we're, we're just waiting to see when we can effectively do it without right. you know violating any of the CDC. You know we don't want oh, to no, cause any problems. No. So um, and then so so we are working that trying to work on a date mm -hmm. when we get that done. And he also works with the school. Okay. Um, to, okay. To determine what their count is, because the school school manages their own count. Yeah. For all yeah. So we're going to try to work this together, and that's going to be something we focus on really heavy in the coming months. Okay. Um, and I'm anxious to get that moving as soon yes. as we can, because I do think there is a need out there, and we do need to try to meet it as best we can. And and talking about the COVID and homelessness, right. unfortunately, with a lot of people losing their jobs, right. they're not able to pay their rent. Right. And if they don't have family to fall back on, well, that that's very true. And it and it kind of it's kind of a downhill. Mm -hmm. You know, our not being able to work causes a lot of people problems, oh, yes. and the poverty level as a whole in Wayne County is not where we would like it to be. Right. Uh, it is to, it's not, it's not, it hasn't fluctuated a lot in the past from 17 to 18, but I think we're up to, we were at 11.2% in 17, 
of families below the poverty level, and we are up to 12.8 at this last count. Uh -huh. So, you know, percentage is, could be representative of a lot of folks or a uh -huh. lot of problems. Um, the state of Georgia's poverty level is at, and if you forgive me just a moment, oh, no. I can tell you that right now, I believe we did a poverty level, or they gave me one. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Um, yes, here we go. Georgia, let's see, we rank 35th in economic well-being, which we talked about, I think, a little bit, but um, the, the percentage of the children um, living in poverty did decline from 21% overall last year to 20% um, as of the, what it looked at this year. Wayne County, and I stand corrected because I'm, I'm telling you wrong, we're talking children living in poverty. We're not talking okay. about the poverty right. level. Poverty level. Right. Okay. So the children living in, in poverty in Wayne County uh, is, as of 2017 was at 30.1%. And at, as of 2018, it, had, it did drop down to 28.7%. And that's children living in poverty. Um, our family and community, Georgia ranks 39th percent in family and community and what that involves is children growing up in a family where the head of the household lacks a high school diploma. Uh -huh. okay. And and what happened is is um, it remains steady from last year at 13 percent um, but it needs to get up. We oh, need yeah. to, you know, that we are, the rate of children living in, um, in those homes um, this last year was, like I said, 13%. Wayne County uh, in 2018 was 11.1%, and 2019 was 12.9%. Uh -huh. So my point is is that we are try we need to do all we can to try to find, reach out with those folks that don't have a high school diploma, and that's where the GED program comes in so helpful. And I would encourage anyone, if they are looking to try to get their GED and they are an adult, call the Coastal Pines College, mm -hmm. Technical College. There are so many people out there, and there is um, such a fantastic program out there for GED, and there's also help for people that can't afford yes. to take the test. Yes. So we need to really promote that as much as we can, yes. because I do believe that will help, you know. Um, and then, of course, our um, Georgia ranks 40. 6% in overall health. Now, overall health, when we talk about children and family, has a lot. It, it uh -huh. involves a lot. But um, the increasing birth, this, the ones that we look at are the increasing low birth weight. Based on the number of newborns that weigh five pounds, okay, uh, or less, mm -hmm. five pounds or less, um, the, the rate was 10.1. And we were third highest nation in the, and third oh, highest yeah. in the nation. Okay, um, the percentage now, uh, the percentage of children without health insurance increased to nine percent um, compared to the national average of five percent. Now, um, there are a lot of things that have to do with children's health, um, and I wouldn't begin to be able to explain a lot of that. Um, you know, some families are able to have health insurance. Some families have to rely on other areas for, mm -hmm. for health benefits. Uh, but I just don't, uh, and there is a broad or wide variety of those programs that can help children or parents get insurance for their children. So I would encourage people that if they, if they find themselves in a situation where their child does not have any health coverage at all, I would encourage them to, you know, call the agencies that can help them understand that DFACS would be the mm -hmm. one. Uh, talk to your local physician. I'm sure that, you know, our pediatric, our doctors that are, that uh, practice pediatric oh, yes. care can help parents, you know, identify some agencies. So, and we also develop a resource directory that Drew at the press mm -hmm. level is allows us to put an entire, I think it's probably eight pages by now, of our Family Connection Resource Directory in there um, in the community book. Uh -huh. um, 
Oh, the um, white. Oh goodness. Yeah, that book. <laughs> yes. Uh, but anyway, I hear it all. The and time. it goes out. It goes out yes. to a lot of people. Yes. In, and it's listed in their health agencies, yes. healthcare agencies. You know, all kind of forums. Uh, that we we try to put in uh, special emphasis, special focus groups, mm -hmm. Alcoholic Anonymous. You know, those kind of things. So they can pick up that book and look. There's phone numbers in there. So yes. I encourage people. Yes. To do that. Uh, Wayne County's low birth rate as of 2017 was at 16%. Of 2018, it was uh, it was uh, looks like 10.7. So we went down a little bit. Uh -huh. um, our Wayne County Children Without Health Insurance, like I said, and the way they calculate this is in a four-year period from 2017 to 2018, we were at 9.7. And then from 2014 to 2018, we were at 9.8. So we did decrease something there. Uh -huh. So that was good. Yeah. You know, anytime you see a decrease in something that important, it's you're happy good. for the decrease. Yes. So, uh, but other than that, <clears throat> we um, we track those, we look at them, we try to make the decisions that benefit the community based on input from the collaborative and other agencies that uh, to try to see what we can do as a forum to improve the well-being, the health of both children and family members in our in our community, yes. and uh, you know, uh, the there's a big percentage of people that need help, and there is a big percentage of people that can't help. Yes. So what our intentions are at that point is to um, look at how we can help the community as a whole prosper. That's our goal: uh, to prosper and to thrive, and to be able to make a living and have a good community to raise our children. In. Yes. So, yes. Uh, anyway, that's what we're. That's kind of like what we're all about. And it's very easy to find the website because I just googled uh, Wayne County Family Connection, and it popped right up. And uh, from there, uh, you know, you you've got all this information that you can go to and. Uh, it just had a lot of wonderful information about the, the group, uh, the organism. Right. What are you exactly? We're a collaborative. A collaborative. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Because uh, everything I was saying, it didn't sound right. <laughs> so the collaborative. And uh, they also have the Facebook page. And again, you know, there's a lot of information that they get out that way. So uh, please, you know, if you want to learn more, uh, get on there and research, and if you would like to get involved, I'm sure they would definitely absolutely. love that. We would, we would absolutely <laughs> cover your involvement. Yes, absolutely. yes. Um, and so, and and don't forget, we they can join us on Instagram. Okay. Uh, they can join us on Twitter. Okay. Uh, just look for Wayne Family Connection and 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 follow us, and we'll be there. We'll That's be, right. We'll keep, we'll keep you updated. Okay, sounds wonderful. And again, thank y'all so much for watching, and uh, we just appreciate you being with us. Thank you. I yes, it. Thank, thank you. I enjoyed it too. All